Hola amigos, I'm the Spanish chef Omar Ali Boy, and today I'm going to show you how to bake roscón de reyes, a very traditional pastry that we eat on the 6th of January to celebrate the day that the three wise kings bring us gifts. And I know for most parts of the world, Christmas have finished on the 1st of January, but in Spain, we do celebrate until Epiphany Day. And it's a huge day. I think it's the biggest day, or at least it's in my family. It's a real day of happiness, getting all together, eating loads of food, and having this cake either for breakfast or for tea. And we'll always have it with a bit of hot chocolate or coffee. And I don't think it has a translation. I would call it like the cake of kings or a donut of kings and, or even the crown of kings because of its crown shape and look like that it has all of the sugar, some comfit fruits which are full of color and it looks like the jewels of the crown. And it's not just a special because it tastes delicious and it's very popular, but as well, there is a tradition to put a little figurine made of porcelain that you can see over here, which is one of the three wise kings, as well as a dried bean within the cake itself. And whoever finds the, um, the figurine would get a little gift, or sometimes each member of the family, we put a couple of euros on the table, and uh, whoever gets it gets the money. And as well, they say another tradition is whoever gets the, the, the bean pays for the cake. That normally is something that we do buy in the bakeries. And if you go to any bakery on the 5th, on the 4th of January, which is my birthday, by the way, uh, there'll be long queues of people waiting for their favorite cake of the year. And this is a very special cake to me because it was through selling it to my neighbors how I made my first pesetas, the currency exchange that there was before the euros came. I was only about 11, 12 years old when I started baking them and selling them. And the reason I did that was because, as I said, there was very long queues on the 4th, 5th of January, people waiting up to two hours in the very cold winter days of Madrid, where I come from, waiting in line outside of the baking shops, of the bakeries. And I thought, there has to be a solution to this. I said, what if I bake them at home and I sell them and I just bring them to their homes? And that's what I started selling it. So there you go. That's the beginning of what it later became a career in the hospitality and the food industry. But without further ado, let me run you through the ingredients. We're going to need a pinch of salt, cinnamon powder, fresh yeast, the comfit fruit, the little figurine, as well as the dry white bean, milk, sugar, orange zest, lemon zest, eggs, butter, rum, vanilla essence, orange blossom water and a strong white flour. All right, we're going to start by mixing together the white strong flour, the pinch of salt, the caster sugar, the cinnamon powder and the crumbled fresh yeast. Use a large bowl so that we don't make a big mess and with the help of a fork, just give it a good mix and make a well in the middle. Continue by grating the lemon zest and the orange zest using the thinnest grater that you have so that you don't have any little crumbs later on within the dough. Then pour your vanilla essence, your rum, your orange blossom water and the milk and give it a little mix with the help of the fork, creating kind of a crepe butter texture. Then whisk in the couple of eggs into the dough and start integrating the flour a little at a time with the help of the fork. As soon as you cannot stir it anymore with the fork, use the tips of your fingers and then your whole hand. And the reason we are doing this within a bowl as opposed to on the table is just so that you can keep it contained, which is easier. But as soon as it's all put together into one big bowl, we're going to start stretching and folding on the table or on the worktop, whatever you have at home. So now you can see a very sticky dough 
because of the sugar and the eggs, okay? So now we're gonna need to start to stretch it and pull it at the same time as making quite a lot of strength on the worktop with the palm of our hand. It's so sticky that it's kind of the easiest way to work this out. Obviously, if you have a mixer, then it becomes very easy as you only have to press start and leave it to do its own thing. After about five minutes of bringing that dough together and stretching it, you will see that the texture starts to change and become a bit more elastic and um, finer texture instead of having loads of lumps inside it. And that is the point where you need to start adding your butter a cube or two at a time and continue to stretch and fold in that sort of a spiral motion until it starts to come together and then you can stretch and fold in the same way as you would do with bread so that your dough becomes airy later on when it ferments comes without saying that you need a good flexible baker's spatula to help yourself catch all the dough that sticks on the worktop. After about 10 minutes of doing this motion, uh, you're gonna just leave it resting in a bowl for a good four hours in the fridge. This will allow it to rest as well to slow down the fermentation. This dough is similar to brioche and you need a lot of time to develop those deep flavors of alcohol and ferment that makes it so characteristic and decadent. After four hours resting, remove the clean film that we've put before so that it doesn't create a skin on our dough. Put a little bit of flour in your hands and just fold it from the outside into the inside like if it was a pizza dough to create a little bit of tension and so that it shapes into a nice bowl and it's easier to make the donut later on. Cover your dough with clean film once again and leave it resting and fermenting slowly in the fridge for the next day. 24 hours later. It could have been 16, it could have been 48. It just happens that 24 hours was what it was convenient for me. I left it 24 hours ago and here I am. Take a look, all we have to do now is remove the clean film, we're going to dust the table slightly and we're going to put this really hardened dough of Roscon de Reyes on the table. Take a look, it's been in the fridge, it kind of stays exactly as I put it where yesterday. All we have to do now is to Make a little hole inside. Dust your hands with a little bit of flour and pierce the dough exactly in the middle with the help of your finger and make enough room to bring the two fingers together and start spiraling that wheel that will slowly but surely make that center space larger so that you can put your whole hand in and continue doing the same until you reach the required dimension. And just so you know, this dough makes the perfect roscone to fill a traditional size oven tray. Line your oven tray with some parchment paper, place the dough on top, give it the shape that you like. It could be round or it could be oval. It's traditional in both shapes in Spain and hide your bean and your figurine by bringing it from the bottom and sort of pinching a little bit underneath just to make sure that no cheat can discover the place where they hide. Now, whisk an egg and brush your roscon throughout before it proofs one last time prior to baking it. My recommendation is that you put the tray within the oven cavity, with the oven off obviously, so that it's away from any external factor or any wind that may create a crust and not allow it to proof properly. As well, pour a little bit of hot steaming water on the bottom of the oven so that it creates the perfect moisture and temperature for this roscon to prove properly, which should take anywhere in between one and a half to four hours. Meanwhile, prepare your decorations. 
It can over ferment really quickly, so be ready. Start with the sugar, for which you will need to add a teaspoon of water until it has kind of a fluffy, wet texture. Cut your comfit fruit in bite-sized pieces. By the way, you will be able to find these fruits in the Arab or Middle Eastern shops. They comfit fruits just in the same way as we do it in Spain. Once you remove your roscon from the oven, make some incisions with the help of a scissor and brush it once again with the leftover egg. Decorate it with the fruits as if they were the jewels of the crown. Sprinkle the sugar and the flaked almonds and bake it in the oven at 180 degrees in the fan assisted mode if you have one with the help of a little sprinkle of water on the bottom of the oven before you close your door just so that it releases a little bit of a steam which will help to keep it moist and create a lovely crust. Comes without saying that depending on your oven it should take anywhere in between 20 to 25 minutes so keep a close eye and make sure you take it out on time before it dries. And not to be mean, but I thought I would put side by side the Roscon de Reyes that I bought in my local supermarket and the one that I've baked myself, which as you can see, I'm very proud of. They look completely different, but it's not just about the look, it's how bland and uninspiring the one from the supermarket is, as well as you can feel it on the um, texture particularly. Mine is a lot more brioche and decadent as well as in the aromas and the fragrance that this one has because the quality ingredients that I use compared to the ones in the supermarket. But anyway, let's stop it there. Let's see who gets the bin or who gets the king, the bad luck or the good luck, but I'm sure we will all have a much better year than the one we've just passed. And I'll take this opportunity to wish you all a wonderful, new year full of joy in good health and packed with wonderful moments all the best familia and see you soon hasta pronto if you enjoy the video please like it share it and subscribe